It's 7.49, 11 minutes before 8 o'clock. Now, if you're inclined to blush easily or if you have young children listening with you this morning, we want to give you a fair warning because this next story is about, well, it's about reproduction. An unusual scientific experiment is happening in the frigid waters beneath the ice of Yellowknife Bay. It's a glimpse into the sex life of the ugliest fish in the lake. Richard Gleason went out to investigate. Yep, there's one. Look at that, eh? How can you say that's ugly? Jeez. Even fish biologists aren't immune to the thrill of catching a fish. Biologist Peter Cott has been ice fishing in Yellowknife Bay all winter. So that guy doesn't look like he's hooked too bad. It's a nice big one. It's around uh, three and a half pounds, that one, eh? And they're very good to eat. Oh, that's a big one. He's after burbot, which are also known as losh, freshwater cod, wing cod, moira... In the northern United States, the slippery eel-like fish are known as, get this, lawyers. I think we've got something here. And while their livers are a delicacy in the north, Cot isn't catching losh to eat. He's researching their sex life. The purpose of the project with the Lodotron is to assess if burbot vocalize in association with their reproductive ecology. So that's if they use sounds to attract mates and select mates before and during reproduction. The Lodotron is a pen under the ice that's made of netting. It's 10 meters wide by 10 meters long by 10 meters deep. Yeah, it's putting fishy catches into it. So far, there's about 30 in there. There's another one here. Oh, he's put up a fight. Settle down. The bucket is almost not big enough. Yeah, this is is fantastic. (laughs) There's also a highly sensitive microphone and a camera, sort of like Big Brother reality TV, but with fish under the ice. Almost 300 species of fish make sounds, and burbot have the same physical features their saltwater cousins, cod, use to make sounds. They're one of the few fish that spawn under the ice in winter. So how do burbot conjugate in a wide open area like this in the dark how do they get together to spawn one possibility is like their their marine brethren they vocalize to attract each other there's a strong connection between sound and sex for many species including humans Cot's research could help assess the effect industrial activity such as ice roads have on burbot think of how something like this might affect your reproductive mood, never mind how it would affect your ability to find a mate in a world of darkness. However Losh find each other, when they do meet, it's quite a party. They, they get together in aggregations, so they basically get into a writhing ball of uh, burbots, so it's like a big burbot orgy. Female losh release hundreds of thousands of eggs that sink to the bottom. Then uh, uh, the males have enormous testes for their body size compared to other fish or other animals of any type for that matter. They're, they're incredible. They uh, saturate the water with milt, and then that milt uh, goes on to these hundreds of thousands of eggs. If Cott's research reveals losh do make sounds to attract one another... That's something regulators will have to consider when permitting things such as ice roads and other on-ice developments that cause noise. Cott acknowledges that to anyone but a fish biologist, this is strange work. He says it needs to be done because so little is known about the fish. In another month, Cott and his helpers will pull up the equipment that's been recording underwater sounds for almost three months and find out whether there really is such a thing as burbot love talk. For the Trailbreaker, I'm Richard Gleason in Yellowknife. So this is by far the best catch we've had. So, And thank you so much for bringing us that story, Richard. I'm sure uh, that was a uh, pretty interesting, uh, fun experience for you. <laughs> it's uh, 7.54 and you're tuned to the Trailbreaker on CBC North Radio 1.